The ship is sinking and all the lifeboats have been destroyed except for one. The lifeboat can only fit six people, but there are ten people aboard the ship. The four individuals who do not board the boat will certainly die. If one throws no one overboard, then everyone will die. How does one choose who to put on the lifeboat and who to let die in the cold waters of the Pacific? An example of this playing out in our society would be deciding who is first in line to receive an organ transplant and who is left waiting and thus risk dying being next on the list. The real-life examples wouldn't necessarily be life or death, but they would still require the same type of critical thinking used for the lifeboat scenario. Think about who has the most and least value today. Teachers are severely underpaid, yet they enrich the life of children and prepare the next generation to be well-equipped for leading our nation. Do we throw teachers overboard? What about children? So much of everyone's time and money is spent on children, but do they offer anything when it comes to helping and being a vital attribute to the people on the lifeboat? No, they don't. But does this mean we throw them overboard? We do not want to throw a veteran nurse overboard when there is a child who has nothing to offer aboard. This is not a logical thing to do because the nurse would be an asset to the individuals on the lifeboat as well as the community. If someone were to get sick, cut themselves, or develop some other illness, there would be an experienced nurse there to potentially save the individual. Although it seems inhumane to throw innocent children overboard, one must decide what will benefit the entire group or the whole community. There are many ways to approach this dilemma. The two that stand out the most are the utilitarian approach and the common good approach. The utilitarian approach works to increase the good done and reduce the harm done. For example, student in a high school classroom will not stop disrupting the entire class. The child is causing all the other children in the class to not pay attention, resulting in them having difficulty understanding what the teacher is trying to teach them. A teacher who practices a utilitarian approach would send the child into the hallway so that the rest of the children in the classroom could begin learning without distractions. By doing this, the teacher has maximized the number of students learning the material even though she had to sacrifice one child. This is the approach that focuses on doing what is best for the most people and finding a way to reduce the damage done to the individuals. The goal of the utilitarian approach is to throw four people overboard to help the other six people in the lifeboat have the least amount of harm done to them and create the least amount of conflict amongst the group. The common good approach is one that focuses on the welfare of the community. It also suggests that the interlocking of relationships of society are the basis of ethical reasoning. This approach is about showing compassion, reasoning, and looking at groups of people rather than individuals. In the first approach, we took one student away from the classroom so that the other children could learn without disruption. Applying the common good approach, the school board has now decided to expel this child. This is done to benefit the community, ensure that the other children in the school are getting the most out of their education. Say the students are preparing for a state test. Any distractions could have caused everyone to perform poorly, so the action of removing the troublesome student was necessary in creating an effective learning environment. In turn, this means that the school board removed the student for the greater good of the class, therefore benefiting the entire school and community by producing better test scores as well as a more well-rounded, educated, and hard-working individuals. It looks bad on a school district when test scores are low, so they remove the child to prevent that from happening and to be beneficial to not only the utilitarian approach, because when using this approach, we look for one who contributes more in society. Based on the analysis, this course of action taken would be to throw over the senior citizen who has 15 grandchildren, both 13-year-old twins, the woman who thinks she has two months pregnant because they would have less of an influence on the people on the shore. They're either too old, too young, or require too much time or effort. The other people that would be on the lifeboat would be the elementary school teacher, veteran nurse, the two young adults recently married, the captain of the ship, and the lifeguard, because they all have key skills that would be beneficial to the community. These two approaches are very similar, however, there is one difference. This difference is how many people are affected by the decision, as well as who the decision is benefiting. The utilitarian and the common good approach are alike in the way that they are both trying to do the most good and the least harm for a group of people. The best approach would be to use both and take into consideration both sides or each approach. If that were not an option though, the utilitarian approach would be the best because it goes a step deeper than the common good approach. The utilitarian approach focuses on creating the least conflict for everyone and throwing four people overboard. The common good approach looks at what would benefit the community instead of what would benefit the people on the boat. If one were to combine both approaches, it would look like a solution that benefits both the individual as well as the community in the end. For this dilemma, it is best to make a decision that combines both approaches because it is an easy thing to do as well as a logical thing to do.